Welcome to eBible Fellowship's Evening Bible Studies with your host and Bible teacher, Chris McCann. For more studies, visit our website at www.ebiblefellowship.org. And now, here's Chris McCann. Good evening and welcome to eBible Fellowship's Bible Study in the Book of Genesis. Tonight is study number 12 of Genesis chapter 35, and we're continuing to read from verse 8. But Deborah, Rebekah's nurse, died, and she was buried beneath Bethel under an oak, and the name of it was called Alan Bakuth. And God appeared unto Jacob again when he came out of Padan Aram and blessed him. And God said unto him, Thy name is Jacob. Thy name shall not be called any more Jacob, but Israel shall be thy name. And he called his name Israel. And I'll stop reading there. Um, we've been looking for the last few studies at verse 8 and um, the spiritual meaning of Deborah, who was Rebecca's nurse, who died and was buried beneath Bethel under an oak. And, and then God calls the name of it was Alan Bakuth. And we've seen, of course, and I'm glad you're probably saying at home, uh, yes, Deborah means word. We know that. We know that. Well, that's, that's good uh, that it's impressed upon us. Maybe we won't forget it. However, we do have uh, a tendency to forget since we're uh, still just men. But it's always good to be brought to remembrance of these things, Deborah does identify with the word of God and the fact that she's a nurse and the word nurse uh, is the same word translated as suck. And we know that the Lord likens his word to a mother who provides milk for her children and, and we drink of the milk of the word or we we did in time past after God saved us. And how were we born? By the word. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. The word uh, gave us birth or we were begotten of the word. And then the word fed us. But at the time of the end, it's time to move on from the milk. And so God opens the scriptures, which are all the deep things of God that he had stored up to spiritually nourish his people over the course of the end time tribulations. First, the great tribulation, followed by the world's tribulation, uh, as there are two tribulations at the time of the end. And these two tribulations are two judgments. A tribulation is basically a synonym for judgment. They're the time when the Lord will open up his word and reveal these deeper things which are like the meat of the word. And, and so we have grown in grace and the knowledge of God and, and matured and come to the point of being able uh, to eat meat. And that's why Deborah, the word, is said to die. But there's an additional emphasis in verse 8 that she was buried. And I mentioned before, there is a number of words here that that point to being down when you're buried you're normally put under the ground and and then it says she was buried beneath and and the word beneath has to do with down below bethel and bethel means um house of god house of god and we know the church is the house of god so the word is no longer providing suck because she died and she is beneath the house of God and and under an oak so even the word under it's a it's a really strong emphasis on the word being down the word being beneath and and especially under the house of God so we went to Revelation 11 and we uh, went to verse 2 and I'll read it again, where it says in Revelation 11, 2, 
but the court which is without the temple leave out and measure it not for it is given unto the Gentiles or unto the nations and the holy city shall they tread under foot forty and two months tread under foot the three English words are a translation of one Greek word um, patio and, and that's what it means to tread underfoot and patio um, is only found five times in the New Testament and we we start in Revelation 11 2 that's the first time we went over to Luke 21 uh, where where uh, God said and uh, oh, Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles the nations so similar context and 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 both uh, of those verses have in view the end of the church age the time when God's judgment is upon the house of God and the time when Satan is loosed uh, and uh, the two witnesses are killed the the two witnesses identify with uh, the law and the prophets Moses and Elijah and the law and the prophets is a figure of speech to represent the word of God so the word of God is killed once Satan rises up and their dead bodies were lying in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called um, Sodom and Egypt. And uh, yet it is the church. It is the apostate church that the spirit of God has departed from. They have the word of God and they are trotting it underfoot. That's the reason Genesis 35, 8 tells us that Deborah, uh, the one who gave sup, died and was buried beneath Bethel, beneath the house of God, under an oak. And the name of it was called Alam Bakoth. And, and even Alam Bakoth means oak of weeping. And, and we have seen that the word oak used earlier in Genesis 35 is very similar to Allah, the name of God. And I think it, the only difference is vowel pointing, so it would be basically the same word. Uh, Allah is a name uh, that God uses in the Old Testament. And so when we read of Deborah beneath the oak of weeping or the God of weeping, which immediately reminds us of what we read in Luke chapter 19 where it says in verse 41 and this is referring to uh, the Lord Jesus and when he was come near he beheld the city and wept over it saying if thou hadst known even thou at least in this thy day the things which belong unto thy peace but now they are hid from thine eyes for the days shall come upon thee, that thine enemies shall cast a trench about thee, and compass thee round, and keep thee in on every side, and shall lay thee even with the ground, and thy children within thee, and they shall not leave in thee one stone upon another, because thou knewest not the time of thy visitation. Now there's a lot of information in those verses, but uh, it, we can see the tie-in to Matthew 24 that's how the chapter began when Christ said not one stone will be left upon another and that prompted the disciples to to say when shall these things be and when shall uh, the sign of thy coming in the end of the world be and then the Lord answered throughout the chapter and he spoke of the judgment on the church and the judgment on the world but in this context, Christ beheld the city and wept over it. He wept over it. So he's above it. He's above it, of course. He's God. And God looks down from above. And so the woman Deborah, historically, yes, she was simply buried beneath Bethel because the place was Bethel under an oak. But spiritually, it is pointing to the tragedy, the tremendous sorrowful thing that God's word has been slain at the point of Satan's loosing within the churches and the congregations 
and it is beneath them. They're treading the holy city underfoot, and it's a holy city because the word of God was there, and they're paying it no heed. They give lip service to it, but they do as they please. And to handle God's word that way is um, certainly to have it be trodden underfoot. If we turn to Ezekiel chapter 34, Ezekiel 34, here also is a chapter where God is speaking of the end of the church age, as he says, in verses 9 and 10, Therefore, O ye shepherds, hear the word of Jehovah. Thus saith the Lord Jehovah, Behold, I am against the shepherds, and I will require my flock at their hand, and cause them to cease from feeding the flock. Neither shall the shepherds feed themselves any more, for I will deliver my flock from their mouth, that they may not be meat for them. When, when the Lord ended the church age, this is exactly what he did. He caused the shepherds, the pastors, the elders, the deacons, the priests, the bishops, the popes, and any other religious title a man would, would like to uh, mention. He caused them all to cease from feeding the flock. And the Lord himself took over that duty and responsibility. And that's what Ezekiel 34 is pointing out. And, and God... Um, emphatically states that he will feed his sheep upon the mountains of Israel. And, and it, it, it's a really a wonderful chapter for that reason that, that God is going to feed his sheep and not use the pastors because he's not using the churches. So he will bring them out and, and outside of um, the corporate church are the mountains, remember that was the command in Matthew 24, let those in Judea flee to the mountains. Well, the mountains identify with God, his kingdom, and his word. And, and, and the people of God went out, and God kept his promise and spiritually fed them. Well, we read also a little further along in verse 18, and 19, seemeth it a small thing unto you to have eaten up the good pasture. And, and again, he's speaking to these pastors, to the spiritual leaders of the congregations. But ye must tread down with your feet the residue of your pastures, and to have drunk of the deep waters. But ye must foul the residue with your feet. And as for my flock, they eat that which ye have trodden with your feet. And they drink that which you have fouled with your feet. And that was the situation uh, within the church uh, up until the point when an elect child of God came out. Because um, at, at that time, leading up to May 21, 2011, it was the Great Tribulation, judgment, the wrath of God was on all the world's churches. Satan was the ruler he had the authority over the church and and, and the doctrines were were um, false and and uh, more and more any true point of teaching of the Bible was contested, overturned and a false substitute teaching a lie was instead put in its place and and this is what the church the churches, taught the people in the pews where some of God's elect were until that very last day when God ended the church age and completed that process of separating the wheat from the tares. Once May 21, 2011 came, all the wheat was outside of the church, leaving only tares behind. And uh, and so then, it uh, you know, the, the people of God would no longer eat or drink that which was fouled by the feet um, of the pastors. And the feet has to do with the will, the will of man that polluted the pure teaching of the Holy Bible. The will of man is as the fly in the ointment of the apothecary that makes it 
um, just the foul thing. It's no longer according to the recipe, to the ingredients that God has dictated must be in order for it to give, um, you know, a, a good odor and, and to be a well-pleasing smell unto the Lord. No, the false gospels all give forth a stinking savor and and they have fouled them they have fouled them and and they here the, they they gave to god's people have some of this water of the gospel supposedly that perverts the gospel of grace that is added works by uh, you have to do something you have to believe yes it's by election but you must believe uh, or or many of the other teachings of of god's word um, perverted, polluted, and fouled is a is a good descriptive word that accurately describes the spiritual condition of the gospels of the teachings that were that were being taught within the churches and congregations at its end. And so, um, you know, God remedied the situation by calling us out, and then He took over. He took over because outside the church, the latter rain was falling and he had opened up the eyes of his people so that they were following the biblical, the proper biblical methodology of comparing spiritual with spiritual. And when that's done, who does the Bible tell us teaches the Holy Ghost, the spirit of God. And, and, and that's the way that God fulfilled his promise here that he would feed his sheep upon the mountains of Israel. Well, now, while we still have a little time, uh, again, this word patio, patio, we found in Revelation 11, 2, that spoke of the holy city being tread underfoot 42 months. It was in Luke 21, um, verses 23, 24, Jerusalem trodden down or tread underfoot of the Gentiles, of the nations. But it's used three more times. And it's important, I think, to show something in the way that God has used this word. So we're going to go to Luke 10, Luke chapter 10. And we'll read uh, from Luke 10, starting in verse 17, where it says, And the seventy returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents. The word tread is the Greek word patio that we could read. I give, you, I give unto you power to tread underfoot serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Now, we, we find the word power used twice in this verse. In the first instance, I give unto you power to tread on serpents. That's uh, Strong's number 1849, and it comes from a Greek word, excusia. And the second instance um, and over all the power of the enemy that's um, the Strong's number 1411 which is the word dunamis and and so there are two different Greek words and, and this is why we have to go to the Greek because when we're reading in English as far as we can tell it's the same word I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Well, you, you see, um, it's the, the power of the enemy or dunamis, not the excusia of the enemy. Because the word excusia, which is uh, in the first part of the verse, can also be translated as authority. Authority. And uh, in, in other words, Christ is telling the 70 who went out two by two and they picture the going forth of the gospel during the church age. 
two by two, two identifying with the caretakers of the word of God. And, and also, it, there would be an emphasis on the two witnesses, to go here, to go there, to go this other direction. It's always two because uh, Moses and Elijah, the law and the prophets, the sending forth of the word. And God is saying, I will give you power, excusia, or authority to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power dunamis of the enemy. Not the excusia, not the authority of the enemy. Because at this point in time, the God-given authority is given to the people of God, the Word of God, operating in the midst of the churches. It's not given to Satan. He doesn't have the authority at this time. And, and we could, you know, if we turn to um, the book of Revelation again, Revelation 11, let's go back there. I'll start from the beginning. But the court which is without the temple leave out and measure it not for it is given unto the Gentiles and the holy city shall they tread underfoot 42 months. We're going to find whenever we find this word tread underfoot that that accompanies the idea of authority. The, the, in Luke 10, the 70 and, and really the two witnesses are given authority over all the power of the enemy to tread the serpents and so forth underfoot. Authority, tread underfoot. And we'll see that also with the end of the church age and authority given to Satan. But before that, let's read verse 3 because this ties in to what we read in Luke 10 concerning the 70 going out two by two. And it will give power, and, and that's an italicized word, so it's not in um, the original Greek. I will give power unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and three score days clothed in sackcloth. These are the two olive trees and the two candlesticks standing before the God of the earth. Two, 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 caretakers of the word, and identification with the word of God itself. And if any man will hurt them, fire proceedeth out of their mouth and devoureth their enemies. And if any man will hurt them, he must in this manner be killed. These have power. There is excusia, the same word from Luke 10, or authority. These have power to shut heaven, that it rain not in the days of their prophecy, and have power, same word, over waters to turn them to blood and to smite the earth with all plagues as often as they will. So they have power. Um, uh, again, it relates to, it said in verse 5, If any man hurt them, fire proceedeth out of their mouth and devoureth their enemies. It, it's telling us that they have power over all the power of the enemy, or they have authority over all the power of the enemy, which is Satan and his kingdom. Uh, again, going back to Luke 10, uh, 19, Behold, I give unto you power or authority to tread on serpents and scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Uh, you see, there is the relationship. You will have authority and you will do the treading underfoot. But the times and seasons of God's program changed and the church age came to an end. And that's what we read in Revelation 11 verse 7. And when they shall have finished their testimony... The beast that ascendeth out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them and shall overcome them and kill them. And Lord willing, in our next study, we'll see how um, this turn of the tables gives the authority to Satan over the church. And 
He now has the power to tread underfoot the two witnesses, to, to tread underfoot all that are within the churches and congregations of the world. Thank you for joining us for eBible Fellowship's Evening Bible Studies with your host and Bible teacher, Chris McCann. For more studies and information, visit our website at www.ebiblefellowship.org. Until our next Bible study, may the Lord's perfect will be done.